Hello and welcome to the Daily Forex Report for December 9th. We are looking at the U.S.-Japanese yen pair first. This pair created an inside bar, did close down overall moving sideways. Look for it to potentially go as high as 84.50, possibly as low as 83.07. Look for some resistance around 84.40 and look for some support around 83.25. Now, looking at the Euro USD pair, this pair closed down, had a larger range than the previous day. We are looking for this pair overall to continue moving sideways. Look for it to potentially go as high as 13400, possibly as low as 13087. Look for some resistance around 13325, and look for some support around 13150. Okay, now the pound US dollar pair, this pair closed lower. Did break the previous high, but just by a little bit. We are looking for it to continue uh, moving sideways overall. Look for it to potentially go as high as 159.14, possibly as low as 156.36. Look for some resistance around 158.50, and look for some support around 157.00. Now, the US Swiss, this pair closed down. Uh, it's moving sideways as well. Look for it to potentially go as high as 09950, possibly as low as 09725. Look for some resistance around 09887, and look for some support around 09755. Now, as far as news announcements go, we have the U.S. Uh, University of Michigan's confidence report being released for December at 9.55 a.m. Eastern Time. Consensus on that is that it has moved up from 71.6 to 72.0, which would be good news for the U.S. dollar. Now, I did get an email recently saying that uh, trading on the day, you couldn't find enough opportunities to trade. Well, let's go through real quick, and we'll use just a couple of... Uh, couple of setups. Let's use a an inside bar setup and let's use a swing trade setup. Let's just see how many of these trades uh, we can find using two setups. Obviously there are more than two setups uh, that are out there but let's just take take a few on the day time frame. We have the US Japanese yen pair. We do have an inside bar here so we have the potential for a trade. You can place your low here for your breakout to the downside or your breakout to the upside. Obviously, this area of resistance is right in line with these four bars, wouldn't necessarily take one to the upside. However, to the downside, we do have a drop down to about here uh, that we can look for. Definitely need to be a little concerned that we have some areas uh, a little bit lower uh, of support that occurred, but nonetheless, you have a potential of pulling about 45 pips, 44 pips out of the market there. Let's go to the Euro USD. No inside bar, no swing trade there. Pound, nothing there. No inside bar. It went too high basically in the setup for swing trades, not there as well. Here's a swing trade setup, but should we take it? That's the question. We have a higher high than the bar before it and after it, and a higher low than the bar before it and after it. My only concern is that it looks pretty steep. Let's throw a let's throw a trend line on there and see. Kind of cuts right through the middle of the open, so that one's no good. Let's go down to the U.S. Canadian dollar pair swing trade opportunity here. It's a little off because the low isn't as low as the as this bar. We actually have created an inside bar with this one as well. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Breakout here and here. Remember, an inside bar has a lower high than the bar before it and a higher low than the bar before it. Now, this is a good area, at least to the downside, of support. Uh, we have here and here. It's at support, so if it breaks this low, we should see it come on down to around this area. So that is a potential trade there. And that's a potential for about 40 pips, 39 pips or so. Uh, to the upside, uh, you're getting into an area where you have previous uh, support through here. Um, you could potentially take it, but you're, you're getting into a range that I don't necessarily like there. I like to see it a little more open. Okay, now let's take a look at, get those out of the way. 
the U, the pet, the uh, Australian US dollar pair created a swing trade setup over these three bars. Let's see how steep that curve is. It looks pretty steep to me. Here again, runs right almost through it. You can see it's already tagged it and pulled back. That's a little too steep uh, for my taste. Let's take a look at the New Zealand US dollar pair. We have an inside bar that was created to the upside and let's check it to the downside. Looks like we could pull maybe a little scalp off here if it moves to the downside of roughly 10 pips. So we've got about a 10 pip move there. Uh, 8 to 10 pip move to the downside. Quick little scalp that we could take. Uh, to the upside we have previous some previous support here that could be resistance if it moves to the upside. Falls right in, right in line here with some resistance. Remember support does come become resistance and vice versa. So that's a potential trade to the upside of 50 pips. Now we've gone through about seven pairs very, very quickly, just looking for two setups. And you can see we found uh, just you know three, four trades, um, and that's per pair, you know, going in one direction. This has two, uh, basically two trades, one to the upside, one to the downside. So depending on where the market goes. Basically, my point is you can find trades if you have a handful of setups. You know, you find you have three to four setups that you look for consistently that are profitable times you know seven pairs most likely you're going to have at least one trade a day minimum you're going to have more than enough trades to trade in your account so just go through them find your find your setups that you're going to use and then systematically go through the pairs that you want to trade and you will find enough trades uh, to trade them well i hope that helps and until next time this is jason filder good trading